Good morning, good morning, good morning. Hello to all of you out there in our online world. Come on in if you guys are here for the team meeting. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Verna, I'm one of your assistant team leaders over here. And then of course, there's my handsome twin. Oh, now you're walking away. I don't know, I was gonna be good today, but do you see the shade? Namesh, who is also, oh, give my whole compliment, um, assistant team leader here. We have a great team meeting for you guys as everybody's kind of filtering in um, probate partners and getting in the right position. Um, if you're here and haven't taken advantage of our vendor row outside, please do so on your way out. Other than that, tell me something good. Let's start off with some bucket fills. Something good. Oh, baby, baby, baby. Every time, that's the song that goes through my head. Robin. Oh, Front row. All right. So I recently became an empty nester, but I was always involved in my kids' stuff, mm -hmm. like band or what have you. Um, if you have kids, that is your book of business right there because I haven't talked to this lady in two years and she reached out to me this weekend to list her beach house in Galveston. So oh, there we go. Whoop. Work them to kids, work them kids. All right, anybody else? I'm on. Yes, no, maybe so. Still, Personal, good professional. Something good. Something good. Nothing good has gone on in y'all. Y'all are depressing. it. Y'all just tired. Oh, we got one. So Natalia and I, we've been showing houses. Mm -hmm. We finally found one for one of our clients today. Awesome. This morning. Good news. Great news. Now we're going to get them under contract. There you go. All right. Anybody else online here? Okay. Let's move on. All right. We have a couple of different things going on in our market center. It's a busy time of year. It's still not working. Okay, busy time. Well, I need mean, whatever is the busy time. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Starting with uh, November 10th, six personal perspectives. If you haven't already, we'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, if you haven't already signed up, we have our potluck that's happening next week. Our team meeting won't be the regularly scheduled team meeting. It will be filled with great food and good family members from our KWSW family. Um, the business planning clinic is happening November 16th. Our our holiday Christmas party is happening on December 8th, so add that to your calendars. On the 9th is, our, is a Christmas home tour with the Child Advocates of Fort Bend. We'll talk a little bit more about that. Save the date for our blood drive that's happening on the 11th of December. And then from now until December 14th, we have the Toys for Tots. You guys should be receiving the newly revised uh, flyer in your um, email. And then finally, on December 21st, um, we're doing our, well, from now until December 31st, you can't see it, we're doing our reimbursement drawing. So let's talk about the six personal perspectives. You want to come talk about that or no? Okay. Okay. Come on. So you can go ahead. All right. So six personal perspectives. You can come see this dude and uh, no, I'm just playing. <laughs> Uh, on the you have it's it's not it's almost full it's almost getting full, there but it's not full yet okay so the, if you're if you're still looking to uh you know clear that slate get a checkup from the neck up is what I've been calling it right it's a pure mindset class this is this fundamental foundation that Gary built Keller Williams on okay we're going into a tough time this is the time where you're planning for 2024 we're going to talk about business planning clinic in just a second it begins right here right? It's all up here. So I encourage you to join me on Friday. It's a full day workshop. I'm almost at capacity, but I am not at capacity yet. You see the QR code on the screen. It's also around the office. Uh, you also got them emailed and texted. So if you plan on being there, um, please register. Love yep. to have you. If you're looking for a breakthrough, this is where it starts. It starts all in the mindset. And we've been talking about business planning. So it goes hand in hand. Our potluck, I like to eat. I don't know about y'all, but we are having a potluck. It's a cultural potluck. So bring your favorite food um, growing up or something that you know you know how to cook. You know you know how to cook or go buy it. <laughs> 
and bring it this um we will have food starting from the hallway going all the way around in a very sanitary way um for you to choose from so i already know what i'm bringing there's two of my favorites and i'm gonna bring no in goose uh, a goosey soup we'll talk about that but anyways and um, so that's happening next week for our team meeting. Bring your favorite, bring, um, invite guests. You know, they're welcome to come and hopefully um, you guys will be there as well. So let's move on. Business planning clinic with our very own Andy St. Jean. That is your broker. It's happening on, is there a way? I, on November 16th, right? On November 16th, it's pretty much an all-day class. If you were not part of the top 50 um, and um, creating your business plan during that time frame, this is your opportunity to come learn from your very own broker on drafting a business plan that's going to carry you through in 2024. You'll use the QR code to register for that. And then, um, is my head in the way? And then we'll move forward from there. All right, next. Told you it's a lot. Our Christmas party is happening December 18th. So take your phones out and please. A. I don't know where I got that from. I literally saw the A. Um, but thank you. Goodness. Uh, <laughs> December 8th. Can a girl get just one mistake? Um, December 8th <laughs> from 7 p.m. to 11 p.m. It's happening at Constellation Field. There'll be a lot of bright lights, a lot of food, a lot of dancing. We may even get Chad on the dance floor. There's a specific oh, song. <laughs> um, and so put that in your calendar, get ready to go. We do have um, each agent will be able to come to the party completely complimentary. So if you register, you need to make sure you show up. If you register and don't show up, we will charge you because we pay. OK, and then you can bring a guest. Um, did we? It, 50, 50, 50 bucks for your guest for your plus one, okay? All right, have any additional questions? Just let us know. Our blood drive, was someone gonna talk about oh, this? Let's, no? let's just clarify on that, that the, the uh, event bright and sign up and all that is gonna be headed out to your way before the week is done, okay? Okay. Did you wanna talk about this a little bit? Yeah, a little bit. Don't run off. Yeah, don't run off. <laughs> don't run off. Hey, this is our annual, hey, you know, do that too. <laughs> this is our annual KWSW holiday blood drive. Every year we get this in the holiday area time. Now, as you can see, there's going to be a little grab bag stuff you can get from this blood drive. Also, I asked them to make sure to change us to a date where they are having a hoodie a giveaway also. Okay, so save the date. Don't give your blood away right now. It's uh, <laughs> December the 11th because you got eight weeks before you have to give, you know, before you can give blood away again. So uh, the donor coaches out there, and uh, all you have to do is just go into the parking lot and the donor coach would be out there, okay? All so, right. Who's, Thank give, you. who's given blood before? Yeah, me too. Okay. All right. Count on y'all guys again, please. All right. Awesome. Thank you for that. Another season of giving. We have the Toys for Tots. You should have received a um, revised flyer in your email. Um, so Toys for Todd is happening now until December 14th. You, if you've passed by the front office, you know that we have some boxes there for you to put, bring in some new unwrapped gifts or toys. Um, don't forget about the teenagers. They love gift cards. They, you know, so you can bring those as well and drop them off and then we'll get them um, to the military. All right, moving on. Okay, HAR dudes. Yes, it's that time of the year again. And we have a contest going on. Well, not really a contest, a drawing. So if you pay your dues by November 30th, um, you will receive two tickets into, into our drawing to get your 2023 HAR dues reimbursed. Okay. Um, if you pay by December 31st and you miss the bucket for November, then one ticket will be entered to get your 2023, 2024 HAR dues reimbursed need to change that. <laughs> All right. So you have now until the end of December for an opportunity to get those dues reimbursed. That's about 500 bucks. So it's well worth it. Speaking of spending money, we've got a facelift going on. If you have an office or you come in regularly and there, you know, you have things within a specific area, you may want to be cognizant of the fact that things might be moved around. So if you want to protect those things, 
um, put them in a specific area or label them um, for when that occurs. So hopefully we start the new year looking different. All right. That's private offices only, correct? Private offices and the cubes. All the cubicles because carpet will be replaced. Yes. Uh -huh. And the cubicles. Everything. Great clarifying Earth question. Thing. Earth thing. Earth thing. Oh, Man. I got to stay here too? How are we going to do We're going to do it like this. That's how we're going to do it. Okay. I got to get a little closer to your husband. Don't don't shank me. Okay, but <laughs> she said you can have me. That's not very nice. This is a season of giving, but calm down. Hey. I don't have green eyes. That's my that's my green eyes. <laughs> hey guys, who, those who that don't know me, I'm the Israel Flores, the productivity coach here. Most of y'all do. Just really quickly, some things on the PC side. Uh, do I got some feedback from my dual career agents as far as a group coaching? I don't want to. I want to make sure those of y'all that are part time have another job. Uh, just not here at the office all the time, but we make sure we stay in touch with y'all. So do career Zoom coaching uh, via Zoom rather would be Wednesdays at 9 a.m. Okay, so I'll, I'll start putting that in the calendar, blasting that out. We will start introducing some evening classes here and there. So like some of the workshops that we do on Saturdays, uh, some of the additional classes that we do outside of Calibre, we'll start doing some of those uh, kind of five to seven. Okay, so I'll start looking for that. Uh, I just started sending out today a WhatsApp group message, so I'll start adding y'all as we go in. Roughly speaking, like if you just joined in the past 30, 60, 90 days, you'll be in a group, okay? So that way we can help each other out. Um, I have one WhatsApp group right now, and they do a great job with answering questions for each other. Uh, so just be in a look at if you get an invite from me from WhatsApp. If you don't know what WhatsApp is, then you'll have to learn what WhatsApp It's just a messaging, a messaging thing. But it just it'd be super um, super helpful to again uh, lean on other agents, right? And then agents that are if you're starting around the same time as another agent is, you can ask questions. Sometimes I'm not available, right? Help each other out on that end. Uh, and then last quick thing, reminder: group coaching right after team meeting, after we have lunch, we'll set up over here somewhere and have group coaching around twelve fifteen ish. Cool. All right. All right. Thanks, guys. That's, That's all, guys. All right. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Yeah, like <laughs> all right guys quick announcement so for those of you that have been here for less than a year um there's a project that i'm involved in every year and it's called tech the halls okay it's a virtual event that i'm one of the uh you can say co-collaborators creators of all right and it's 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 grown from being a local and regional event to now a national event where last year we had 2,000 attendees all right, it's a one day virtual event that we strategically place between this downtime between mega camp and family reunion. So we strategically slide it in here. It's a full day virtual event where you're gonna get a lot of value and knowledge. It's not all technology based, but it's, it's, it's pretty technology focused. And we get a lot, and we were getting a lot of help from KW directly for this. Well, the cool thing about this year is, is that we actually became KW official. So this is actually now a KW, yes, Chad, we're good, um, became a KW official event. All right. So that, so we're super proud of that. So it is going to be on December 6th from uh, 10 to 3, uh, excuse me, 9 to 2.30 central time. Uh, the, the likelihood is we're going to have Gary himself uh, opening it up and then the who's who are going to be speaking. There's going to be a lot of value following that generally based on technology. So I'd love for each and every one of you to take that in. This year, it does fall on a Wednesday, so we do have team meeting in the middle, okay? Um, yet, I do encourage you to get as much of that as you can as possible, okay? So, I'm looking forward to seeing y'all. Uh, just uh, from a personal note, you guys uh, would be supporting me big time by by being in, by just taking in this value. All right, cool. All right. Thank you. So, thank you. Oh, you were scanning the code? Oh, my bad. That's a picture of me. Okay, if you don't already know and you haven't taken a little glance at your calendar, November 11th is Veterans Day. And so we have several um, members of our or KW family members who are veterans as well. And we would love to just recognize them, honor them, give them a round of applause for the service they've had to our company. Um, not our company, to our country. So whether you are Army, Marine Corps, a Navy, um, veteran, Air Force, Space Force, or, or the Coast Guard. If you're a veteran and you're in the building right now, if you would please stand. Oh, there we go. Awesome. 
thank you so much for your service. If you haven't already gotten a pin, we have a pin. And if you notice, you guys, we have our um, service wall up on the left side. Those of you who are not here, I can't direct the camera that way. Okay. Um, but definitely we thank them for their service. Part of the freedom that we have came at a cost. Okay. All right. So thank you for that. Other than that. All right. It's time for our team meeting. Okay. So we have a couple of special guests here and I'm probably going to move this. Is it possible to get the um, screen ready to go first? Um, that are here to talk to us a little bit about probate. Um, specific partners that you want to get affiliated with. That's why we brought our, our row out there. And then how to properly position yourself to be the person that is called to get them connected to the services that they need, okay? And so, and in return, in return, we hope to grow your business. So it is a strategy that's out there. This is one of the things we're going to talk about to help you better position yourself for the greatest transfer of wealth that's occurring. Who's that transfer coming from? Yeah. Say it again, please. Only one person's been paying attention to me. Boomers. Thank you. The boomers, right? The baby boomers. And so um, a lot of tough conversations are going to be had between now and as those transfers are occurring. So how do you prepare yourself? And so today we have get you guys to come on up. We have Karen Van Holten of Majestic Title, who used to be a probate attorney. Well, still is, still is. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna move it. And then we also have, well, I'll let y'all introduce yourselves. And no, no. No. <laughs> me. no, we have this. We okay. have this for you. Come on, Zoom. We have our special guest. We'll we'll do, I'm trying to watch the time and be cognizant of it. We'll let you guys introduce yourself and give a brief summary of who you are and what do you do. And yeah, we'll just start there. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. Good morning or early afternoon. My name is Rhonda Walls, and I'm a partner in the law firm of Sal Alvarez and Walls in Katy, but we serve mostly Harris and Fort Bend counties, and I'm actually a proud resident of Sugarland. Yes, we are. Thank you. <laughs> um, my name is Edison Titus with the Titus Law Firm. Um, we serve um, anywhere in Texas, mostly the greater Houston area. Uh, we specialize in business, real estate, estate planning, probate, tax, um, and uh, SEC, uh, like syndications, funds, that sort of thing. Um, so we can help anything with the in the life cycle of uh, real estate from A to Z. And that's it. And I just also want to recognize them because you were already standing. So you didn't like stand for people to know that you're also a veteran. So we thank you for your service. Yeah. And then y'all, of course, know this lady, right? This beautiful lady, but go ahead and introduce yourself. yourself. <laughs> so I'm Karen Van Holten. I do own and manage Majestic Title. Um, and when Verna and I were talking, I said, well, I used to have like a law firm that was very, very, you know, active. And we did a lot of probate stuff. Until I fell down the stairs at the Fort Bend County uh, Courthouse running to get to, you know, my hearing and trying to do title at the same time. I was like, well, I better just focus on one thing for a while. And so now we do a lot of stuff at the title company with people. Um, we'll talk about during the presentation. And I, I haven't worked with Mr. Titus yet, um, but I've worked with Rhonda a lot. So that's, that's who I am. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Round of applause for them, please. Okay, so the style of this meeting is going to be a little different. The first part will be like what y'all are used to, ask y'all a couple of questions just to get the crowd warmed up, you know. And then we have a whole game that we're going to play. And on this spin wheel are um, questions or ideas or concepts all around the probate and estate planning, um, I guess, topic. And when we spin the wheel, whichever one it lands on, you guys will take an, have an opportunity to answer. Y'all good with that? And this is his first time. You're welcome. <laughs> welcome to the game. <laughs> Talk about putting them on the spot, right? Okay, so in case this is just foreign to everybody, walk them through why it's important for a real estate agent to understand a little bit about the probate and estate planning process. Um, so whenever I meet uh, a real estate agent, I always tell, I always tell y'all, look, y'all are at the tip of the spear. Um, the amount of money that you can make is directly proportional to the uh, 
to about you know how how sharp you are at the very very beginning right like the the more value you can bring at the very beginning the tip of the spear is directly proportional how to how much money you can make and if you like money then that should be very relevant to you right um you knowing those little nuances you don't have to know it like a lawyer knows it but to be able to issue spot probate issues and kind of point them in the right direction that means that you can identify okay i can turn this into a sale in this amount of time or that amount of time so you can appropriately put it in your funnel while you're working on shorter term deals you don't have to let go of your long term money cuz it all turns into money at the end of the day and at the same time you're guiding your your person to the end of the road which also turns into referrals because if you help them through that hard time they're going to send more people to you all of these things are like multiplying factors snowball factors that make you not just an agent. There's a whole lot of agents running around. If you want to separate yourself, make sure that you have knowledge that allows you to to be separate from everyone else, and you'll you'll make ten x. Uh, I hate to sound like Grant Cardone, but you'll make <laughs> a lot more money. Okay, uh, so passing it down. Let's just explain for those who don't know what is probate, and how, and then you'll we'll take you to estate planning. So, what is probate? So probate is just a big word that everybody kind of knows, but it has a bunch of different things you can do within probate. If it's an actual probate, you have to go through a court proceeding, right? And then there's things that are alternates, alternates, alternative solutions to probate. And those are a lot faster and a lot easier to handle. But probate, you go through, you have to file something with the judge. The judge has to look at certain aspects, depends on what you file, because there's a lot of different things that we file. Um, and then a judge either has to hold your hand the entire time or give someone personal representative power to be free to do whatever they need to do to take care of an estate. So people hear probate and they automatically think one thing, right? Mm -hmm. But there are different probate processes. And then just to the first question, one of the things from the title perspective, because I have kind of a dual perspective, is that I cannot tell you on one hand the number of times that people have died during the contract process, right? Um, during an actual, we've got a closing in three days, or actually the, the buyer is signing on a Friday, but the seller signed on Thursday and died Thursday night. So it's important for you guys to know about the topic because you don't want to have a, you don't want your client to call you and say, my husband just passed away and we're supposed to close on Friday. And you go, oh my God, I have no idea what to do. I guess you're just SOL right? So you kind of need to know how to guide your client or the resources to guide them. And probate is not always the answer, mm -hmm. um, but it can be. And it's good to know how long that's going to take, right? All right. It's great if they already have an estate plan. So walk us through that. Absolutely. And again, an estate plan is something that can be very simple to more complicated. And you really need to talk to someone that's not Google. <laughs> Uh, and that does this all the time uh, because it could be, it's very individual. It can be very simple, but you'd be surprised sometimes even people without tons of wealth could have a more complicated estate. Mm -hmm. They've inherited a piece of property in Michigan. What are you going to do that with that when you die? How are you going to handle that? Uh, but also tell people have your power of attorneys. Sometimes I think those medical power of attorneys and durable power of attorneys are almost more essential documents than wills, depending on your situation, because in, an, in a blink of an eye, you can be just fine to needing one of those powers and you need someone to step in to be able to act on your behalf. Um, and especially as we're starting to age and that question of the baby boomers came up, came up. <laughs> Um, it's also dealing with your parents as they age and what you're going to do about that. Because as you said, that transfer of wealth is going to happen. How are you going to best handle that for your, you and your loved ones? Um, a good key of reference is I tell people, if you have a life-changing event, which is death, birth, accidents, oh. retirement, uh, moving, reevaluate what your state documents look like. That's just a good rule of thumb. Um, life-changing event are every 10 years uh, because you would be surprised how many small life-changing events that can happen within 10 years that can have an, an impact on your planning. What's a good time to start that plan? Uh, I actually uh, do a lot of working with my friends, right? In 30 minutes, uh, I'll shorten it. 
Uh, I say at the time your kid turns 18, because a lot of parents don't realize that once their kid turns 18 and you send them off to the University of Arkansas in their car with their uh, car loaded down, you can no longer act for your child anymore. They're now an adult. So I actually encourage people to bring and make their kids come to their appointment by themselves. It was funny. I made my godson come to my office when he did his powers for the first time uh, because it was an it was an adult thing that he needed to do, right? And that's you're starting those adult life decisions. Uh, most kids probably don't need a will of 18 because they've got a, 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 a beneficiary designation on their bank accounts, but their parents can no longer act for them if they get in an accident on the way to the University of Arkansas, right? Um, and their medical conditions, right? And their HIPAA releases, because as a parent, you're still probably financially responsible for them. But that makes them start that process. Mm -hmm. When you start having a house, cars in your name, uh, bank accounts, the first job, it's never too soon. Unfortunately, 25 year olds die every day, right? So um, especially then moving on when you have children, I, I, it's almost a proper parenting is to have your estate planning for your children. Cause what if both your, you and your husband die, your kids can't inherit your money. You got a big problem. My favorite baby shower gift is to do estate planning packages for my friends. Now oh. it's not fun when they open up. Oh, it's an estate package. You know, that's not for all the girls in the room. They do not have fun opening that up at the bride, the, the wedding shower. I mean, the, the baby, baby shower. shower. <laughs> But to me, I've made sure that child's taken care of. So to me, that's the biggest gift. All right. So we've heard why it's important for us as agents to understand this process of probate and estate planning. Why is this important to you guys? Why'd you get into it? Uh, for the money. No, not right. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> um. So I, I, I kind of fell backwards into um, estate planning and probate. I started off in hardcore real estate and business. And um, a lot of my clients, um, you know, they make money in real estate and business. And they, they make money usually in business first. Then they have money and like, what do I do with it? So then they find themselves in real estate. So now they're in real estate. And um, uh, of course, everyone wants a deal, right? Uh, you could tell them, Hey, it's $10 for this property. They're like, can I get it for five? Right. <laughs> Everyone wants a deal. So where do people end up? They usually end up looking for folks who are going through distress, mm -hmm. meaning probate, someone's passed away, someone's getting divorced, something like that. Right. So I fell backwards into it because a lot of my clients, they were like, well, Hey, can I get this property or some wholesaler comes to them with a dirty deal or something like that? And I find myself wading into quiet title, which is not probate, but probate and quiet title usually go hand in hand in some form or fashion. And um, that's how I found myself in it. And, and and I like it. I enjoy it. The more I understood it over the years, the, the more I saw the importance of it. And, um, you know, we could be out of business when it comes to the the probate side of it if everyone were to get their estate planning done, which is great for us, we get business from estate planning, but we lose out on the probate side of it. But for some reason, no matter how much, we could talk until we're blue like her dress and people still don't get their estate planning done. Uh, just out of curiosity, can everyone who has their estate planning done raise their hand? <laughs> I was like, I don't know, maybe four people out right. of... <laughs> <laughs> so you know um get get your estate planning done I... <laughs> so i started witnessing will signings at the age of 14 because the neighbor's son was an attorney and he was really cute <laughs> so um i've been around it just for that long and then i uh, went to law school and then i went to more law school to do oil and gas and energy and you guys heard the name Merrill Lynch. Does that sound familiar? Yeah. So you're looking at the girl here who spent six months reviewing the Merrill probate over oil and gas issues. Yeah. And so it gave me a lot of experience in estate plans, complicated issues and things like that. So when I started my own firm, it was very easy having reviewed so many oil and gas probates um, to 
to walk into that. And my first client called me at 8 PM. She was going in for a double mastectomy uh, the next morning and her husband hadn't allowed her to do any planning. And so, because he thought it was a bad omen. And I will tell you in all the ones I've done, I've never had anyone do their will and then die when they left my office. Okay. Um, we did it for her. We got it witnessed and it was done at two in the morning before her surgery. So I found that I was really good just with talking with people through the decisions and asking them and being able to not cry in a lot of situations when I was like at deathbeds and things like that. So for me, it was a very emotional connection when oil and gas is not oil and gas is very, just, you just do stuff. Right. So for me, I really like the relationship part of it, but what I will tell you is if you're in this room right now and you're married to someone who have children, who has children that aren't your kids, you need to make an appointment with one of these people or an estate planning attorney and get it taken care of. Cause the biggest problems we see at the title company are from children from other marriages. Okay. I have one right now. Um, the gentleman committed suicide and his kids blame the wife. They will not sign off on anything and they're about to go into court and they're going to be there a while. Right. And you can, if you want to take care of your spouse or you want to be taken care of by your spouse and you guys have children from different marriages, you need to get this done. Right. Cause you never are guaranteed to wake up in the morning. We're thankful every day we do, but that's the biggest problem that I see in the title side. Uh, Similar to Titus, uh, our law firm has a lot of business clients. And so I learned the probate to help them because especially if you have a business, um, you want to make sure there's a con business continuation plan. Uh, I personally like to do it because I like to forego those fights. Um, to me, having your estate package done is she says, you're not going to die tomorrow. I mean, I've had some clients die relatively close, but it's because I've gone into the hospital and they're, they're on they're on life ending care. Uh, I've never had someone even, I had an 80 year old that still hasn't died. And I think I did their estate document 15 years ago. So yeah, knock on one. Uh, but part of it is I think you owe it to your family. We worry so much about the assets we're giving our family, but we don't worry as much as the peace of mind that your documents are in order to make it easy on them and that it fly through and you make it efficient and easy. The money is one thing, but you they're suffering from your loss and you need someone that's going to care. And the first thing I do when I get a call from anybody, if it's because someone has a terminal illness or someone's passed away, I'm like, I'm so sorry for your loss. And I do mean that because I want to make it as easily as possible because the grieving process sucks. And it's something you have to go through, but we should make that as easy as possible for our families. Well, thank you. No, hold on to that because it's time to fall. Oh, all right. Spend the, the well. All right. So you're probably going to, we're still on camera, right? Yeah. Big money, no whammies. Um, yep. Let's get in and see what comes up. Don't like, go too far. I'm gonna, well, I got the microphone. Somebody so. do the music. I know. I don't know that big, but no money. What is it? No big, no money. No 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 oh, somebody loves that one. No Which one? Okay. okay. When can a client use a power of attorney? Why am I yelling? When can a client use a power of attorney to sign documents? I just did this one like last week. Do you want to go? Okay. Okay. Um, you can use a power of attorney to sign a document. A when the uh, so. Power of attorney has to be appropriately um, uh, executed. And then if it says that it's um, it'll be used right away, regardless of if the person is incapacitated or not, uh, then you can use it. And only for the powers that it says that you can sign for. If it says that you could sign for real estate, then you can sign for real estate. Uh, but if it doesn't say that you can sign for, say, a brokerage account, then you can't do that. So it's all totally dependent on what's inside of the paperwork, um, which is a very unsatisfactory answer, but it depends is the actual answer on right. what's inside the document. All right, cool. And? 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 Oh, yes. Sorry. The person has to be alive. I know a lot of people try to use powers of attorney to close. For people who are dead. 
even after the person has died, oh, sorry, yeah. even after the person has died, they try to come in and say, I have their power of attorney. As soon as someone dies, the power of attorney is no longer any good. So it's kind of a, a little bit of a trick question there. Cause as attorneys, we for sure know that you have to be alive. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, next question. <laughs> what happens if one of the parties dies during the contract period? Oh boy. Um, well, hopefully that person who died has a will, right? That will help things uh, go a little bit faster. But who takes the place of that, of, of the person who's under contract? It is the estate of, more importantly, it's the executor, the executrix. Um, so uh, actually, I'd like to answer this in two ways. Imagine for a moment they had a power of attorney and they're now incapacitated. So they're in a coma or something. Well, if someone has a power of attorney, then the person who has that POA can then sign on their behalf. If that person kicks the bucket, well, then we need an executor or executrix, or if they did not have a, um, a will, well, then uh, they need to go to the court and get an independent administrator, uh, yeah, an in administrator, independent or dependent, depending on the situation, in order to sign in place of the estate of John Doe, who is now passed away. Okay, right. y'all want to add anything? Um, just for a little bit of frame of reference, uh, one thing you can do if you have kind of senior clients and it's husband and wife, um, and the house is clear, you can do now a transfer on death deed in Texas. Yeah. So even if you're a real estate agent and you can send someone off to an attorney, especially if someone has got a terminal illness and that might be an issue coming up. Say you've got a 60 day closing and you've got someone about to enter on hospice. As long as they've got capacity, you can go ahead and have them do a transfer on death deed. And that passes upon death with presenting that death certificate to the county. So that is one thing you can kind of put in your arsenal as a tool um, because a lot of people look at start selling houses when one of the married couple has that terminal illness and the wife is like, I'm not taking care of this house or the husband's like, I can't live here without Myrtle anymore. So just to not put that Myrtle. out there. Okay. <laughs> All right. I, I've got oh. to add to this one though, from the title, if you don't mind, if you'll okay, indulge. Sure. Okay. So here's the thing, because this is, this has happened plenty of times in my career. First of all, don't panic. Okay. Don't panic. There's going to be a solution and there's going to be a way you can use ne your negotiation skills if you need more time. The other thing is when you go to the title companies, you guys have heard the magic buzzwords, right? Just do an affidavit of airship, oh, right? Gosh. Just do an affidavit of airship. No, please don't just do an affidavit of airship. Your clients need guidance on what that means for the rest of their estate. They need guidance for, um, what it needs to be done. And a lot of the title companies won't allow an affidavit of airship with the person being deceased within six months. They have to be gone for six months. Um, our underwriters, I just closed one this morning. Um, the gentleman died a week and a half ago. So that's a really quick turnaround. And I had to jump through a lot of hoops to get it closed, but we got it closed. So it's working with really great attorneys who know the process that can speed it up, but just don't panic. There's going to be a way for you. Okay. It doesn't just mean, oh, well, it's done. Turn sound the termination. All right. Thank you. Reach out to your partners. Okay. Next question. Oh, no, we do need music right here. I know. When is it appropriate to use? It's like you set it up. An affidavit of airship when an owner has died. We know it has to happen after six months. Well, yeah, death. With, without it, without getting some exceptions done, right? Okay. And the exceptions are, I had to make sure that the last bills had been paid at the hospital. So I had to get a letterhead from Memorial Herman. I had to get a letterhead from the funeral saying that the funeral debts had been paid. I had to ask the widow about the other things in the estate. I had to ask um, for three witnesses that could attest to having known this person who was 70 years old when they were in their 20s all the way to 70 so that they could make sure there were no children out there hanging out that we didn't know about. It is only appropriate when you ask all of the right questions or you've been given the legal guidance and advice to do so. Not all title companies can give you that. I'm not knocking on them. They're just not trained and they don't have partners like Rhonda. And I call him Mr. Titus because I thought his name was Titus. So Edison. 
<laughs> he goes by Titus. Yeah. You go by Titus. Yeah. Okay. And Titus, it's really, really important to give your clients the best advice. Don't just slap a band aid on it. That's going to cause them problems later down the road. Yep. Just to give you a little frame of reference on the affidavit of airship. If, if we, if you come to me to do an affidavit of airship, we're going to be way more expensive than other attorneys. And you're not going to want to use us. And you might say, well, why, why would you tell us that? Well, the reason being is because um, in a very backwards way, if I am putting that together and then executing it and then filing it for you, I am putting my neck on the line, right? And so I'm going to do my due diligence and nine times out of 10, it'll be a waste of time and it's not going to be something that should be filed, but I still want to be paid for my time. I actively discourage people from using affidavits of airship for all the reasons that she said. If you need to figure out who is the appropriate heir, you probably need a determination of airship. Just go to the court, get the judges, John Hancock, which takes time and money, sure. But this is a surefire way to guarantee that us lawyers have more work a little bit later on down the line when somebody ends up suing somebody else. Yeah. All right, let's go to the next one. And this will probably be our last one. And then we'll take questions. Okay, why is it important to hire an attorney? I think we've answered that. Kind of okay, let's that go through another one. Are y'all clear on that one? Yeah, yeah. yeah. not Google. Google is not an attorney. Google JD. I mean, come on. Who is your client? Oh, yeah. Who who is your client? In, in, in the probate situation, if you are representing you as a real estate agent, right? You go to a home and the person says, "My, this was my mother's home and she's deceased. Who is your client? Mm -hmm. If you're the, if you're going to the listing, like you're going for the, the listing client? and the person who shows up says, this was my mom's property. Well, who is your client? Who owns it? Who's ever in charge of the estate, right? Because mm -hmm. the estate's going to be handling it. Yep. Okay, I put I wrote the questions. Okay, there's like 70 others on another spinning wheel somewhere out there um, that we have used. But it's important to know who your client is because I have one right now that we've had under contract since May, because the woman listing the house and selling the house told the agent she was the executor of the estate, and the the client or the agent ran with it. There's no estate. There's no will. As a matter of fact. You've mentioned a suit to quiet title. And I'm glad to know you now because I had another I have another attorney working on a suit to quiet title from the 1940s mm -hmm. because this woman thought because she was the oldest child, she was the executor. She was very unclear. She had never heard of probate or anything like that. So you need to find out if you have someone who's deceased in title, who are you working with? And are you having the right person? And here's where it affects your pocketbook. Did the right person sign your listing agreement? What should you ask for? Well, verify. so I didn't get your email until I'd already, I was already on the road. I have a flow chart that you can use with working with title. Kind of remember, I am in kind of this, like a Venn diagram with these guys in some way, but on the title side, I do risk analysis. So the documents and the things the attorneys do, it's risk analysis. So I have a flow chart of risk analysis for real estate agents when working with clients who, where somebody's died and in title. So um, I will get that to you, Verna, so that you can get it to the team. We'll put it in our resource yeah. um, docs on KWSW 25. Okay. All right. Well, do we have any questions from the crowd? We can take two, two questions and then, and then we'll wrap this up. No. I, project. I really don't need that. But, um, don't don't that oh, Okay. So um, I'm glad that you um, you guys are here first. Um, so thank you for coming. Um, I was just thinking the same thing. I was like, oh, I think I need to do a will, right? Because I have three girls and um, I have a home. I have things that I want to leave to them. So I need to do a will or I need to do a pro like <laughs> what, what do I need to do? <laughs> because I assumed that my oldest child would be the executor. And I'm so I'm glad you said that because I don't want to go. And then I, I actually told her that, like, you're the oldest, you're the one, you're going to handle everything, you're going to do this and do that. So I'm really giving her incorrect information. So 
Where do you start? Where do I start? <laughs> what do I do? I should have just came and hugged you. You need, I know, that would have made my day. Um, you need a will, a medical power of attorney, a statutory durable power of attorney, and a directive of physicians. My, one of my estate planning pet peeve is the oldest child rule. Well, they're the oldest child. Well, the oldest child is in prison. The oldest child you have told me for the past 15 minutes that you have had them on your payroll for your entire life. Is that oldest child who is one, is somebody you want to have fiduciary obligations close out an estate, make sure your bills are paid. I'm not picking on your oldest child. I'm taking the, I don't, I, we are not in the year 1000 in old England. The oldest child does not mean anything. You pick the people that can get the job done. My oldest sister is a homeless meth addict. I am an attorney. Do you think my parents picked the oldest child? Because obviously that is not a good decision. It does not matter if they're the favorite, the oldest, the youngest, the middle, that's, you know, Jan Brady. It's if you've got an accountant for a child, that might be a great executor. If you have a lawyer for a child, that may be a great executor. Um, that is the biggest myth out there and and do not that was not a that was a great question because I will tell you nine times out of ten the first question that I get well I'm just gonna appoint the oldest well the oldest is stationed in Germany okay that's probably not the best person either because they're out they're out of the country right so um and I'm going to pass it to Titus because he probably has some of those pet peeves. Because I go, when people says, I'm going to ask this person executor, why? What's their qualifications? What does your other children do? A good attorney is going to flesh those questions out and help you make the best decision. And I brought up Germany because when you served in the military, right, you probably still have military clients that that's an issue. When they go. Um, yes, that is true. And uh, to, to your question, uh, all those documents that she mentioned, definitely. Uh, you, at the end of the day, you you want a will. Uh, just even if you have nothing, you want a will. I'll give one of my employees. He had this situation that was pretty interesting. I think this will really highlight the the usefulness of a will. Um, a fella, he was uh, eighty something years old. He had nothing to his name. He's driving in an eighty four Cadillac or something like that. Um, he got rear ended and he, he was killed, uh, by, uh, it was a, like a dump truck on duty and they were drunk. Um, so anyways, old man dies. Uh, he was perfectly healthy. There was a, a reasonable settlement of, um, the, I think the minimums where it was 2 million or so all of a sudden he passes away has nothing to his name except for now a $2 million claim and no will. And uh, so then of course you have to go to uh, probate um, and all of a sudden, you know, even family members act funny over money and now people are fighting and um, uh, end up, uh, I mean, the lawyers win at the end of the day, but just, just think about that. Like anyone can pass away and all of a sudden get something whether it's a lottery ticket, uh, whether it's a, a car wreck, you know, something like that. So yes, you you do need a will because um, you also don't know you could win the next big uh, lotto jackpot. Thank you guys so much. Um, Was this valuable? Yes. Vern, I think your mic is out. All this, my child was getting sick, so. Um, 
Okay. Uh, now that messed up my segue. All right, these are ally business. <laughs> and you, you, you have a message, right? Yeah. Announcement. Uh, my name is Yu Yi. I've been working for oh. for for more than eleven years in this office for five years. But today is my last day in this oh. office. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I'm I'm still working for Reliant, okay, because like by July and August, I was so busy. Every day is working 13 hours. So I told my manager, I'm too busy. I cannot handle too much. So she decided to remove me from this office. Can't she said, we're giving her so much business that she's tired. You get a me. lot of awards from it. So that's yeah. awesome. We love and you. I, I'm, uh, I'm still working for Reliant. Uh, for those agents has been using me for this year, you can continue to use me or you can use it, Tanya. Okay. But she'll be the main person here. Okay. So, yeah. All right. Hi, yeah, Tanya Fobbs. So she is leaving, and I know that you guys love Yu Yi, but um, I like to work. I like money. I do not sleep on it. So please use me Monday through Sunday. If you have anybody, I'm um, with Reliant. I'm new, new gal. Uh, give me a call. You'll be getting emails and texts from me, and I really look forward to working with you. So thank you for having me. If you're here, some of our business cards and information is on. They're the in the hall. In the hallway. As yes, well. ma'am. All right. All right. Hi guys, uh, good morning. My name is Tanya Tercios. I am the regional manager for Reliant. Um, and these are my beautiful ladies that are in part of my team. Um, trust me, it was not my decision to remove Miss Yu Yi from this office. I know that she this is her home. She's been here for many, many years, and I appreciate all the support that you have provided, Miss Yu Yi. Um, we are just trying to help alleviate some of that from her. But in the meantime, you do have wonderful Tanya Fobbs who will be taking care of you. Um, and I just appreciate y'all very, very much. And we look forward to partying it out at Thanksgiving and Christmas and all these other events with you guys. So thank you so much again. I appreciate it. All right, Dale with MCAT. Good morning or afternoon almost to everyone. Um, one thing we discussed a few weeks ago was affordability. That is has been in certain markets the number one reason for cancellations or bust outs on transactions that agents are having. Anyone remember that conversation? Okay. So we know that part of a mortgage payment, principal, interest, taxes, insurance. Okay. Got it. Principal and interest, taxes, insurance, PMI, HOA dues. Also potentially a second HOA if you're looking at a condo or a townhome. We're going to calculate that total monthly payment. What we're seeing at the end of the year, as you all know, taxes are coming up due. If the person that owns the current home has certain exemptions, those exemptions are not going to apply to the new buyer. The title company and we as lenders are going to look at the tax certificates, but we're going to remove those potential exemptions. And this may be the difference in your buyer qualifying or not qualifying. Give you, for instance, let's say it was capped. The value couldn't go over $200,000 for some reason, but the house is selling for $300,000. Your buyer is going to be assessed or qualify based on the new or highest value. And that could be the difference in qualifying versus not qualifying. If you're working with buyers right now and you're showing houses and they don't have a pre-qualification letter or know what their monthly payments are going to be, you're wasting your time. You're here to get paid. They would love to buy a house, but it needs to be inside of their budget. So we're here to work of the numbers. We probably work on average 50 estimates on a monthly basis that never go anywhere. But that's part of what we do for you all and for your clients. So we want to be here to help you get to the finish line. Please use us if we can. Thank you, Dale. Thank you. Okay, finally, it is our lunch sponsor for the day, Silvio. He's been here to help educate us on so many fronts, um, both with our new agent program, as well as, you know, I love going out on the field trips with you. Um, and so I'll give it to you. 
Okay, so hello everybody. I already know some of you. I've already worked with some of you. Um, I'm just here to talk a little bit about our services as a company. BPG Inspections uh, has currently in the Houston area has 10 agents. So we can normally uh, accommodate uh, an inspection request pretty quick if you're, you know, hey, I have a short option period, three days, two days. Aside from that, we have several things that stand out from other companies, like, for example, a $2,500 uh, insurance in, uh, if we miss something in an inspection or if we uh, make a mistake in the next 90 days, something were to fail, there's something that covers. Obviously, there's some conditions. Things have to be working uh, or, or the inspector has to say, hey, they were working at the time of the inspection. And if they fail, there's a process. It's kind of a home warranty. I'm not saying don't get a home warranty, but definitely it's something that's additional. Um, as far as myself as, as an inspector, hey, I know how hard you work. I, I'm sure you all heard the phrase or somebody saying, hey, I know it's easy being an agent. You just drive people around, show them houses, have drinks, and wait for the fat check in the mail, right? I know that's not true. I know you work a lot. I know you drive a lot. I know about the marketing, all the patience you have to have with clients, with fellow agents, et cetera, et cetera. And finally, you put a house under contract, and here comes the home inspection. It's going to ruin the deal. No, that's not how it works. The way we work is... We provide the best customer service with the client and the agent, which in turn, in reality, the agent is our client by informing and giving the power to the person to decide. Um, we try hard not to kill the deal by, again, giving the information to the client. One of the, th the classes I've taught with several of the agents is how to prevent the inspection deal from killing the deal. It's a TREC approved CE class. So, we know how to do a thorough inspection because we want to provide the best service for our client. And you as agents want to be also covered that with, there's nothing hidden or anything. But there's a specific way that we can rely the information to the client. So that goes very, very, in a, that goes a long way in helping the deal. Also, we will always have information to you even if you can't go to the inspection i will text you before and after before just letting you know that i'm being there and after with some major issues that we might have seen in the house so that you are prepared on what to do uh, on your amendments i'll let you know how your client's mood was at the inspection and we always invite the client to the inspection that goes a long way we're not just hey go do the inspection send the report and that's it you can call us even if you have a house that you're walking around and you want to ask something about the house that you're not sure about you can grab a picture send it to me i'll be happy to help you out even if you got an, an inspection that an inspection report from a house you're listing that you don't understand the terminology of any of the repairs that they asked for you hey you can ask me you have my phone on the little main boxes or on the brochures it's on the back put it on your put it on your phone you never know. I know most of you have your regular inspectors. You go to inspectors, but if they're busy, if they don't provide any of the services, we provide everything from septic, to home inspections, well inspections with lab, uh, with lab testing of the water, uh, sewer scope. Maybe you want to just try somebody else. Maybe you just want to try alguien que habla español. That's me also. So that's basically it. Awesome. Silvio said that you guys have commission breadth. I'm going to need y'all to handle that and provide some value. Um, all right, that concludes our meeting. I, I trust that by this time next year, every single one of y'all who were here or who is in the reach of the sound of my voice will have your will created for your family and will be able to support your parents and your clients um, with their needs when it comes to estate planning. Thank you guys. Enjoy your lunch.